In the previous section, we covered the data jargon as to what is data, what is the database, what is the prime difference between data and information, what is a DBMS. Now, in this section, we would be looking into the need for a DBMS. Is a DBMS really required or is it just adding on to our tensions? Was data getting stored before DBMS came into the play? Was there any other method by which data was being stored? Or was data actually being stored? If you think there is no world without data, any example that we take from our day-to-day -day life, it does need data. So before DBMS came into the picture, the file processing system or FPS as we would refer it from now on was being used. The primary goal of a DBMS is to provide a way to store and retrieve data in a manner which is both convenient and efficient. Now, let's take a visual example to get a feel of what exactly is an FPS. So here, we have an officer, we have his work desk, and we have piles of files. Now, for any person to clear all these files, till end of day would require nothing less than an energy booster at every given moment. There are a lot of disadvantages that exist when we work with FPS. Jokes apart, whenever we are working with data, we need to manage large bodies of information. Also, there must be some way to ensure that the data is safe and despite various system crashes or attempts and unauthorized access, the data that is retrieved is correct. If data also has to be shared among several users, the system must avoid any possible anomalous results. We will look at each of the advantages that a DBMS provides over the FPS one by one. The first disadvantage that we see is data redundancy and inconsistency. Now, what do we mean by redundancy? It is nothing but unnecessary repetition of data. Inconsistency, as in the data across different places, is not in sync. We'll take a very simple example. Let's say that there's one Mr. Thomas, who's a manager at the West End Departmental Store. Now, as he's a manager, he also becomes an employee at the chain of West End Departmental Store. Now, he, his record would exist in two places. One is the manager file and the other is the employee file. There might be a lot of employees who are also managers in one or the other stores. So, it is only human to have some type of incorrect entry of data or a typo error which might result in inconsistent data entry. We just see, like in the manager file, Mr. Thomas has been spelled correctly as T-H-O-M-A-S. In the employee file, the person might have been in a hurry to go back home, so he spelled it as Mr. T-H-O-N-A-S. Now, if you've just noticed, M and N happen to be neighbors on the keyboard. Also, they have this kind of a look-alike feeling. So the person who entered did not even realize that something has been entered wrongly. But in the larger picture of things, this results into a lot of discrepancy, which gets avoided very nicely when we use a DBMS. The next pointer is data isolation. Now, what exactly do we mean by data isolation? It is scattered at different geographical locations at different places. Let's talk about a very common data type, date. A date can be stored in various formats. One of the formats we all are aware of is DDMMYY. Another is MMDDYY. Another might be DDMMYYYY. So on and so forth. Now, if you look at a date 11, 12, 12, it might mean 11th of December if the date format is DD, MM, YY. Also, it might mean the 12th of 
correct november if the format is mm dd yy now in order to read this type of data we first have to know what format the date was stored when the data entry was being done now one fine day mr business analyst comes with a requirement wherein he needs to find out the details of all the customers who have opened an account before christmas of 2011 now in order to meet his requirement we should first find out the format in which the date has been stored across each file write the program accordingly and retrieve this information immediately the next star the business analyst changes the requirement and wants to find out about all the customers who have opened an account between the financial year 2012 and 2013 again it is a very cumbersome process we have to go back to each file find out the format in which date was entered when that file was being created write suitable programs to retrieve the information and satisfy the business analyst however in dbms any kind of data isolation has been handled with great care another important issue that we come across is the integrity issue now there is a very common requirement when we are giving passwords in order to create any account on any social networking site or any mail site always it asks us to make the password very strong so ideally they want a proper mix of upper case lower case characters numbers and also special characters now if the files are scattered it is very difficult to enforce any integrity constraints like this however dbms allows us to enforce any such kind of constraints so if we want a strong password we can ensure that the password is a proper mix of upper case lower case letters alphabets numbers and special characters in a banking organization it's again required that the balance should never be negative so on and so forth there are lots of examples wherein we need to ensure certain kind of integrity checks this becomes very simple when we are taking dbms into the picture atomicity problems now when i say the word atomicity yes it does come from the word atom now let's not go back into chemistry let's just recollect that atom was nothing but the smallest possible unit that exists when i talk of a database and if i want my transaction to be atomic i want to say that the transaction should happen either in its entirety or not at all now let's take an example and say what does the atomicity problem mean there is some mr jacob now he wishes to transfer a sum of 5000 dollars to his mother's account mrs emily mr jacob has a balance of 25000 dollars before any transaction took place and mrs emily has a sum of 5000 dollars as her balance now this transaction consists of two sub transactions wherein an amount of 5000 dollars should first be debited from mr jacob's account and the second part is where an amount of 5000 should get debited into mrs emily's account so in the ideal case scenario the final balance that remains should be 20000 dollars for mr jacob and 
$10,000 for Mrs. Emily. The transaction began. $5,000 got debited from Mr. Jacob's amount. So he is left with a balance of $20,000. However, the system crashed interim. Now, what exactly is the case scenario once the system recovers? The amount of 5000 already got debited from Mr. Jacob's amount. But did it get credited into Mrs. Emily's account? No, because there was a system crash that happened. FPS do not have any kind of a mechanism to ensure such kind of discrepancies from not occurring. So, although our ideal case scenario was Mr. Jacob being left with $20,000 and Mrs. Emily with $10,000, the scenario is something like this. Mr. Jacob still has $20,000 only. However, Mrs. Emily's account still reads $5,000. Now, who is going to be responsible or accountable for this $5,000 that's got lost in the process? DBMS ensures that a transaction of this nature is completely atomic. That is, any sub-transaction that happens is rolled back if the complete transaction does not take place for any reason, either a system failure or a system crash. In a scenario like this, this is still a small amount, but when we talk of databases, we are dealing with greater figures. It becomes very difficult to hold anybody accountable for such amount being misplaced in the process. Now, next we look at concurrent access anomalies. Now, what do we mean by concurrent access? It means being able to access the database simultaneously or at the same given point in time. Let's take another example. We have Mr. Anthony, who's a very favorite customer of Standard Chartered, so they have given him a credit card. The current card limit is $75,000. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Anthony go to Dubai. There's a huge shopping festival going on, and they both go. Mrs. Anthony is carrying the add-on card. Mr. Anthony enters into a men's showroom and he picks up something worth $12,000. At the same time, Mrs. Anthony enters into a jewelry shop and she picks up a necklace worth $70,000. Now, both of them are shopping using the credit card. One has the main card. Mrs. Anthony has the add-on card. Now, if concurrent access is not being taken care of in an appropriate manner, it might so happen that even though the card limit says 75,000, they would actually end up spending 82,000 without having the permission to do so. DBMS avoids any such kind of discrepancies by efficiently allowing concurrent access. Whenever one person is accessing an account, it is locked and Another person cannot use that account till the time the lock has been removed. Any such kind of check is not possible when we are using the FPS. If a transaction like this is allowed, this will actually result in anomalous results and the extra $7,000, again, nobody will be accountable for it. Security. Now, security is a very common term. We keep using this term on and off in our day-to-day -day life. When I talk of this term, the first thing that comes to my mind is a scene from the movie Three Idiots, wherein three actors enter into the dean's office, the key is made available to them by one of their friends, and they obtain the question paper for the exam on the following day. Now, I cannot have such kind of a security mechanism for huge organizations. This was real life, it still worked there. But when we are into the real world, we cannot have a security lapse at any given point in time. DBMS allows us to ensure that data is secured and only accessible by people who are really authorized to view that particular data. So it believes in the saying that all data is not meant for all. We'll take an example wherein we have an organization, say IBM, 
Like any other organization, it has a lot of departments, like the finance department, the HR department, the marketing team, the sales team, and the IT team. Although each department belongs to the same organization, IBM, I would not want people from any other department other than the finance or the HR department to have a look into the employee database. I can make such kind of restrictions with respect to DBMS. So a DBMS grants different viewing and modification privileges to different users based on their designation and only people who are actually authorized and who should be able to view data at any given point in time are the ones who are given this privilege. This results in prevention of any kind of unauthorized access to data. So we've seen how a DBMS is far more advantageous over an FPS and why do we actually need to use a DBMS? So this kind of justifies why we are getting into the nitty gritties of studying about DBMS, the basic concepts that come into the foreplay, so on and so forth.